everyone. Thank you so much for tuning in. It's Brian here at Red Leaf Ranch, and today I am in the greenhouse. It is a really exciting day because we're finally going to start on our seedlings for the growing season. Spring is right around the corner. Thank God, winter has been really depressing and I just can't wait to get back into the garden. Um, I just finished making my garden plan and I'll be making a video on this and a blog post as well. It's gonna be a lot more in depth, but now that I have a really nice layout of what the garden is going to look like, I have a really good idea of what I'm going to plant and how much to plant of each thing so that the garden really fills out. It's a really good idea to start seedlings and really get a jump start on the growing season. And you preferably wanna do that indoors in a controlled setting so you have a higher chance of success with your germination. And what I'm going to be starting today is gonna to be a really nice variety of peppers, tomatoes, brassicas, and lavender as well. Um, I have my cell trays in front of me and a really nice potting mix here of bark, peat, perlite and sand and as far as I know lavender is the only seed that needs something a little more specific so I have a mixture that drains even more so than this mix so it has a lot more perlite in it so this is my second official year of gardening and I learned a lot last year especially when it comes to what to plant in order to transplant not everything likes to be transplanted I got pretty carried away last year and just planted everything because I was so excited. I, I had corn starts, bean starts, carrot starts, and really those things just don't do well when being transplanted. So when it comes time to plant these seedlings, I'm just gonna directly sow corn seeds, carrot seeds, and bean seeds straight into the ground because again, they don't like being transplanted. But peppers, brassicas, tomatoes, and lavender do do well with being transplanted. So we're gonna get them started. Let's get to it. So I'm just gonna fill my seed tray with soil. I don't wanna pack it down too much. I still want it to be able to drain nicely. And I'm gonna be planting quite a few of each plant um, just to increase the likelihood of germination. I feel like when it comes to starting seedlings, it's better to have more than not. Because once you start the seedlings, it's not just growing the seedlings, but making sure they also survive to uh, until they get to the garden. So here is a finished cell tray. I'm gonna do one more. So most of the seedlings, again, have this standard um, mixture, but for the lavender, um, I added more perlite so that it has more drainage because the lavender seedlings do better at germinating in more well-draining soil. At least that's what I read when I researched it. I'm not really sure why that is though. I imagine they just don't like staying too wet. It's usually the reason for more well-draining soil. All right, so these trays are ready to go. So let's get planting. I think I'm going to start with my tomatoes because that is one of the things I'm most excited for. Um, on most of these packets, it says to start your tomato seedlings about eight to 10 weeks before transplanting them outside. And I plant, I'm planning on planting these um, after the last frost date here, which is gonna be April 24th. So I think I have plenty of time to get these seedlings started. Um, and oh my gosh, <laughs> I am so excited for this beautiful array of tomatoes. We have Black Beauty, Pink Bumblebee, Pineapple, Brandywine, Yellow Pepper, Costaluto Florentino, and Abe Lincoln, a really beautiful big red tomato. I'm also going to be doing Cherokee Purples, but I think I'm just going to get those starts from the store because um, this is already kind of a lot. Actually, real quick, before planting everything, I'm actually going to label the sections so I don't lose track of what I'm planting. So when writing the tag, I'm making sure to write the name of the variety and the date that I planted it on. So with tomatoes, you want to make sure you plant them about an eighth of an inch so it's not really too deep into the soil. Oh my goodness, and I love getting all of my seeds from Baker's Creek Heirloom Seeds. They have a really 
super cool variety of seeds, just a whole bunch of stuff that I haven't seen before. And that's really what I love so much about vegetable gardening is all the different varieties of the typical foods that we find at the grocery store. You're really able to grow so much variety, things you'd really just never see anywhere else. If you manage to grow it, of course. Growing it is a whole other thing. <laughs> Seeds are precious, you want to make sure they don't blow away. I'm like standing right next to the heater and I'm worried they're just going to fly off. Wait, what is this? The pink bumble. And I'm going to plant like one or two in each cell, um, just to make sure, be extra sure that they germinate. I just plop it right on top, bury it a little bit under the soil. I'm just using my bare hands, um, but sometimes it even helps to have like a pointed tool. I sometimes even use the label to dig the little hole. One down, six more to go. <laughs> all right, so I'm all done with the tomatoes. In about a month's time, depending on how big the seedlings are once they start to grow, I'm actually gonna move the seedlings into a bigger pot so that the roots can expand and the seedling can actually grow bigger. Um, I think the bigger the plant is before going in outside, the better. So you want to make sure that the seeds are well taken care of. Now to some eggplants. I'm going to be planting this beautiful Malaysian dark red and this Nagasaki long eggplant. I actually grew this last year and I loved it so much in the kitchen. I just had to grow it again, um, but I'm actually going to grow less varieties of eggplant because last year the pests were pretty intense with the eggplant. They were like ravaged by flea beetle. So I'm actually going to plant less plants of these so that, you know, I don't have to take care of as many plants because the care for eggplant, at least here in Tennessee, is quite demanding. Um, and I'm actually going to grow them in containers so they're elevated off the ground so that it's harder for pests to get to them. And I think with that it's going to help a lot with growing eggplant, so fingers crossed. I actually had really good luck with planting eggplant last year um, in terms of seedlings and germinating. So I'm gonna keep it in one row actually, just to conserve space, cause I still got a lot <laughs> to plant. Um, and I'm gonna conserve this tray for the peppers and brassicas. And the eggplant seeds actually have to go in a little deeper. They're about a quarter inch into the soil. I really can't tell you guys how excited I am for the growing season. It has been really hard for me to just like stay cooped up inside and not do anything gardening related. I mean, I've been able to keep myself busy with the candles and soaps and holiday season, but really nothing compares to being outside and working in the dirt. I'm sure you know what I mean. Ain't nothing like it. Oh, these are such smaller seeds. This is the Malaysian dark and the seeds are so much smaller. I think I'll do some brassicas here and these two cell trays are going to be reserved for our lavender. Um, I've never grown lavender from seed before. It's always been a start so I'm going to plant twice the amount just to experiment with germination because I'm not really too sure how well they do at germinating. Now the greenhouse does stay pretty consistent, a really nice like 65 to 80 degrees in here. Um, so I think it'll be a really nice climate for all of the seeds to germinate and be able to grow in. Um, I do know that maybe some of the Asian varieties of pepper might need it a little hotter. Um, I'm not really sure what I'm gonna do with those. I don't have a heat pad to keep the seed tray warm. So I might actually plop them in the other greenhouse, which is a lowland greenhouse. So it's super hot, super humid in there. But I'm a little weary of doing that because last year we grew all of our seedlings in there and the, the heat and humidity, a lot of the seedlings really loved it and they grew about twice as fast as I expected they would. So we had a lot of starts and seedlings ready to go, but it was nowhere near 
time to actually plant them outside and they actually suffered for it. Um, so I might actually do everything in here so that it grows at a more gradual pace. So, yeah. All right, moving on to the brassicas. We have this beautiful Violaceo di Verona cabbage. It's like a beautiful rainbow cabbage. It just like blows my mind. We got really lucky with cabbage last year. It grew so big and so beautifully, which is hard to do in Tennessee with brassicas because the pest issues are like really bad, especially cabbage worm. She is a devil. So when I actually plant these outside, I'm gonna be sure to tent them to make sure nothing lays in our brassicas. So let's get to it. Oh my gosh, guys, you guys have to see this. This is a thousand head kale. Look at how big those leaves are on this thing. Massive. We tried growing it last fall, but it got too cold pretty fast. So it's censored their growth quite a bit. So I'm just gonna start them from scratch and see how it does growing throughout the season rather than fading out in the winter. I've actually never seen a cabbage flower. Cause you look at a cabbage and it's just like a cabbage. Is the cabbage the flower? Like, where do these seeds come from? I've never seen it. That's another funny thing about growing these plants is you actually see what these plants look like rather than just like the fruit at the grocery store. Like the plants can be super beautiful. It's really surreal. Oh, oh, oh God, oh God, oh God. Dropping seeds, dropping seeds. And I'm gonna sell them out tomatoes. Shh, I'm not gonna curse. This is a PG channel, I think. I don't know, homesteading and really dealing with animals. Nature can be pretty cruel, it's, it's not that PG. You know? If you know, you know. If you know, you know. You are Russian red. Never grew it, but it was free. Thanks, Baker's Creek. We are not sponsored yet. Oh God. Brassica seeds are so small and round and flimsy, it's easy to lose track of them. So be careful they don't fall in your other trays because they blend right in. They're like this dark brown color. Now we've got a purple Sicily, a really beautiful purple cauliflower. Look at that. I don't know if it's focusing. I hope it is. If not, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's hard when you gotta produce everything yourself. Gorgeous. This fan is not helping. Okay. Lastly, our thousand head collet. I like to drop them in the soil first, just so I know that they're planted. Because sometimes I lose track of what I've actually planted as I'm planting them. But if I actually see them, it helps. All right, now let's give our lavender a go. Now, do these like it deep? Oh no, they're like surface layers. So really just pop them on top and barely cover them so that they can germinate well. I'm very excited to be growing a lot more herbs because for those who have been following for a while, you know, I'd make candles and soaps and I really love being able to provide, you know, homegrown herbs in the actual products. It makes it that much more special and, and gives it that much more of a, a homemade feel. Ooh, these are very small seeds, okay. Super small, I can't really see, but they're so tiny. They look like little bugs. I'm just gonna plop you. Plop, 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 plop. Sprinkling them in, it's like hard to separate them because they're so small. So a few of them are just landing in there and I think that's okay. 
barely covering, barely covering the seeds. Barely covering. Like they're just kind of falling into the cracks of the perlite. All right, so this tray is all set. Just gonna move this over, up, bring this one down, and we'll start working on our peppers. Or actually, I'm gonna plant those brassicas first before I forget. We're going to be doing some more broccoli and our white snowball white cauliflower. I'm actually going to need quite a bit of broccoli. So we'll plant extra of the broccoli because there's a lot of room for broccoli in the garden this year. It's really dark and gloomy outside. I hope this light's okay. I'm being lit by the seed rack. It's actually pretty pretty. Just dropping them in. And then we'll dig them after the fact because I don't want to lose track of what I've already planted. All right, now we can move on to our peppers. So with the peppers, I was reading, it's really helpful to actually soak the seeds overnight before you plant them. Um, and I actually didn't do that, but I think it should be fine because the conditions in here, again, are very controlled. Um, I'm gonna be sure to water them as soon as I'm done planting them. So I don't think I should have an issue with germinating. They still germinate without soaking, but soaking them might help them germinate better. Um, for a few varieties, I am going to plant a little extra just in case to make sure I have a nice success of germination. All right, let's get to it. Now, peppers, you want to dig in just a little bit, about a quarter inch. Fingers crossed we get some good germination. I'm really, really looking forward to growing peppers. They were one of my favorite things to grow in the garden last year. One thing I definitely want to master this year is the art of preserving your food. Um, I was not very well equipped last year to be able to do that. So we had to eat a lot of food as soon as we harvested it. We didn't have a lot last into the winter months. We had a lot of sweet potato and potatoes, but I really want to get into canning to be able to preserve a lot of these peppers and tomatoes. I think it would be really great. Um, also making sauces and salsas, just learning as we go, learning as we go. Just be sure that you're going. Just, you know, I just planted this pepper, the Ajvarsky pepper. Never heard of it, but it's really pretty red pepper. It's a roasting pepper, so it should be really good for sauces, salsas. Woo. Here we have some California Wonders. Really nice bell pepper. I grew these last year and they were really beautiful to watch grow. And actually, when I first started growing peppers, I thought that they grew that rich red or whatever color it is first and then it would turn green if it like over ripened. But it's actually, it grows green and then it turns into the color that it will finally be. And I had no clue. Oh my gosh, I am so excited for this. Oh, shishito peppers. I love shishito peppers, especially roasted. Or I've had them pickled before and they were so delicious. I can't wait to grow them in the garden. Ooh. I'm so ready for these. I'm gonna plant extra to make sure we have them. So again, I'm plopping them in the tray and then digging them in so I don't lose track. Cause I do that. Yes, I can't wait. Oh, here's a really cool variety. Murasaki Purple. Another Japanese variety. 
I tried growing them last year, but I started them way too late. So fingers crossed I can get them going this year. Next up is really beautiful Buena Mulata pepper. Oh. Just gonna have a rainbow assortment of peppers. We love to see it. <laughs> I can't wait to try these. They're said to have a very unique flavor. I think they're a mild pepper though. Not sure. I don't remember. I ordered them quite a while ago. Oh, and then lastly, this Etiuda pepper. Really beautiful orange pepper. All right, so I'm all done planting the seeds that I'm starting today. Now I'm gonna water everything, give it a really nice soak, and then I'm gonna top it off with a humidity dome just to keep it really nice and warm and humid in there because that should really help with germination. All right, so finally we're gonna top it off with these humidity domes. Should help keep it nice and humid inside, which will really help the seeds germinate. All right, and with that, the seeds are ready to go. I am so excited. I can't wait to see how they do and just to get my hands in the soil again. So now I'm gonna place these in a spot where they'll get really good light and I'll be sure to check on them every single day and make sure they don't dry out. I wanna keep them nice and moist but not too damp. And hopefully it stays really nice and humid under these domes and these seeds are gonna be really happy and germinate. Thank you all so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this fun walkthrough of how I'm planting my seedlings and what I'm getting started for the next growing season. I'd love to hear what you guys are growing in your own garden. So please leave them in the comments below. I would love to hear your ideas and some tips and tricks on how you guys grow seedlings because I myself am still learning and growing every single day and I would love to hear from you guys. Be on the lookout for a garden plan video with the plan that I showed you earlier in the video. It will probably be attached with a blog post so it's going to be a really in-depth look of the plan for the garden and why I planned it the way that I did. It'll be really fun, really informative, and hopefully really inspiring. Again guys, thank you so much for watching. Your support is so appreciated. Be sure to subscribe and share this video to keep spreading the love for all things gardening and homesteading. I'll see you guys soon. Take care, everyone.